So folks, welcome back. This morning I was looking at the Morning Joe show. I call it Mojo. And of course, Donald Trump was all over their discussion on that show. And if he's obviously got a, a stiff deadline here of Monday to come up with like $500 million to post bond. I mean, crazy, crazy amount. And the interest on that is something like $112,000 a day. Donald Trump is appealing to wealthy donors to try to raise the money. He's resisting bankruptcy the best that he can, according to the Wall Street Journal. And I saw this on Caitlin Collins last night. Um, and this is according to Eli Honig, who's the commentator and attorney as well. He said that Letitia James, according to New York law, would be able to gain immediate access to Donald Trump's bank accounts to start to settle the claim. Immediate access. I mean, it's just amazing amazing stuff to me, folks. I, I just can't get my head around that. And, you know, some of the people were saying the the amount is too much. You know, that does this really meet the, the level of the crime? $500 million. Because to even appeal that, he's got to come up with the money. And if he can't, he's got to fire sale properties, which is a hardship. Um, even Trump has said, you know, this is this is cruel and unusual punishment. You know, I look at it as this went through the court system. It's accountability, folks. Uh, this man ran a fraudulent organization all over the place, books and records, totally fraudulent, and they're holding him accountable. Other people have said, you know what, people in New York have been kicked out of apartments because they couldn't pay $800 a month. And it's not fair to let Donald Trump go. He's been talking a, a big game, hasn't he? Forever. He's been talking a big game, bragging about how much money he's got and all of this kind of stuff, we find out that he's run a fraudulent corporation basically to to get that money, and he's not been paying any taxes, and all of a sudden, folks are starting to crumble. Well, I don't know. You know, that's a lot of money. No, it's accountability. Pure and simple. So, folks, take a look at this. Russia is uh, in the headlines again. This is according to Business, Business Insider. It says a Russian district called an election recount after someone else got more votes than Putin. My God, how could that happen? They were doing the recount because the polling station in the city of Barnall in the Southern Republic of Altai, wherever the hell that is, counted 763 votes for Communist Party candidate Nikolai Karatanov compared with just 73 for Putin. How could that happen? How could that happen? We must do a recount. Officials are saying that a data entry error has led to inflated results for Karatanov. I mean, how can you do a data entry error when you've only got 700 votes? God. I don't know. I don't know, folks. Okay, so let's look at this. Democracy docket, Mark Elias. This man is doing amazing work when it comes to voting rights for Americans. I mean, pure and simple, this man, uh, I just can't say enough good things about Mark Elias and what he's doing every day to fight the Republicans through lawsuits and, and their efforts to try to restrict voting rights and democracy. So what he's doing here is this is his update. I, I recommend that you go to democracydocket.com and check it out. But this is his update. He's talking about Michael Watley, who's the, the newly hired RNC chairman. He says, and it, let me preface it with this. He's saying, he's talking about the, the Republicans uh, at the RNC now and, and who they've hired as lawyers and who ultimately Mark Elias is going to be fighting against and what kind of firepower uh, is he up against. It's critical, you know, to know your enemy, so to speak, folks. And he says this, it also makes sense that Watley's first new appointments are to his legal team, even as the RNC was announcing mass layoffs, Watley moved forward with three high profile additions. Watley chose longtime GOP lawyer Charlie Spies as the RNC's chief new chief counsel. More importantly, Watley convinced Republican lawyer Bill McGinley to serve as outside counsel for election integrity. Like spies, McGinley is an experienced Republican attorney, a tenacious lawyer. McGinley is a true MAGA believer, having served in Trump's White House. These two serious election lawyers are joined by former OANN anchor Christina Bob, who wrote the book, stealing your vote so you know she's part of the big lie she's not adding any firepower to that duo but he says i worked against watley when he ran the north carolina republican party and have had legal fights with spies and mcginley they're not like mike lindell 
Jenna Ellis or Rudy Giuliani. None started as Trump sycophants. Each traded away more establishment ties to go all in with MAGA. While they may now be all in with Trump, Spies and McGinley are competent and smart lawyers. These lawyers, and the many others who will work with them, will soon find themselves arguing against their right to vote in favor of voter intimidation and election subversion. If history is a guide, they will end up ethically and perhaps legally compromised. If the stakes weren't so high, I might feel bad for them, but the stakes are that high. And he says, during the State of the Union address, President Joe Biden implored all of us to be honest. The threat remains and democracy must be defended. Republicans are prepared to play offense to put the fate of our democracy on the docket. So am I. Keep fighting, Mark. We love everything that you're doing there. So folks, let's talk about this um, this whole situation. Yesterday on, the, on Capitol Hill, Republicans brought in several different people. One of them was Tony Bobolinsky. Yeah, I'm not kidding. That's his name, Tony Bobolinsky. Where do you go to get a name like this? This is like right out of central casting. You know, you couldn't put a, a movie together with more interesting characters than the, the Republicans seem to come up with. Though the whole thing seems to be fading. The, the whole intent of the impeachment just seems to be crumbling. And listen to this interview. on, And this is coming from Fox News, by the way. And they, they just know that it's, it's not going to work. And at the end, this commentator sort of says, well, we're basically going for stuff that I'll show you in a second is unproven. So they, they really have nothing. With that, we bring in Andy McCarthy, former assistant U.S. attorney and Fox News contributor. Andy, great to have you with us. Um, there, Thanks, there's a Martha. lot of headlines out there today that, that point at uh, this impeachment process falling apart. What do you think? It is. Well, the impeachment process never really had a chance of achieving the removal of President Biden, right? So it's always been from the start, I think, a, a platform for trying to bring some political accountability to this amazing amount of money that went into the coffers of uh, Biden family members and their associates from regimes that or at least agents of regimes that are mm -hmm. anti-American and corrupt under circumstances where the only asset that seems to cross the table after the money goes the other way uh, is access to Joe Biden and his political influence. So, You know, they say that, but they have nothing. There, There is no proof of that. I mean, it's ridiculous. They, they, they are claiming that the only way Hunter Biden could have done what he did was through Joe Biden, but they, they have no example of it. Not one. Um, and I mean, you've got this guy, this character here. Again, Tony Bobolinsky. Look at him. CNN is saying former Biden family business associate recycles unproven allegations to House panels. And... Uh, it says that uh, over the past several years, Tony Bobolinsky has seemingly shared his story with anyone that would listen, including the Trump campaign. But his loftiest claims that Joe Biden was deeply involved in his son's overseas business deals are still uncorroborated and have been undercut by other key witnesses. And this guy, get it, get this, folks. He was a former Biden family business associate. Former Biden family business associate. I mean, to be honest with you, if... Um, if the guy came to me looking for a job, I think I would have said, you know what, you got to go to the Trump organization. Go talk to Matthew Calamari. You know, he sits over by Joe Rigatoni at the Trump organization, you know, the Olive Garden section. Um, where do they find these people? I mean, it's like uh, Matthew Calamari was, was questioned by the grand jury, both he and his son, about the handling of classified documents at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, I mean, what, what a joke. They come up with these people in unfounded claims, folks. Un totally unfounded. They've got nothing that they brought forward. And have a listen to this. So this is Lev Parnas, one of the other people that was in that whole inquiry yesterday. And here's what he said. The impeachment proceedings that bring us here now are predicated on false information spread by the Kremlin. Everyone involved knew they were sharing lies. From Trump and Giuliani's shadow diplomacy, through my missions to Ukraine and elsewhere, 
to members of a BLT team, a group convened for the sole purpose of investigating and damaging the Bidens. I mean, that's amazing. This is a guy who was hired by Rudy Giuliani, folks, and is obviously telling the truth about what happened over there so that they really don't have anything to go on, folks. I mean, it's a, it's a sham. So take a look at this, folks. Remember, <laughs> this article is ridiculous. Remember the Moms for Liberty co-founder and husband, uh, you know, that, uh, that were in the news? Well, now they're suing to keep the threesome text private. And uh, Moms for Liberty co-founder Bridget Ziegler and her husband, former Florida Republican leader Christian Ziegler, have filed a lawsuit to stop police and prosecutors from releasing text messages related to a threesome they were involved in with another woman. Last year, Bridget Ziegler and husband Christian Ziegler, who was the chairman of the Florida Republican Party at the time, admitted to engaging in a threesome with a woman who accused Christian of raping her in his wife's absence. Police cleared Ziegler of the rape charges in January, and they said that there wasn't enough evidence to pursue criminal charges. He was removed from his role within the GOP by an almost unanimous vote, and Bridget Ziegler is facing staunch calls to resign from the Sarasota County School Board. It's sort of like reminiscent of that Harper Valley PTA sort of thing going on. Uh, here she is, you know, staunch anti-LGBT person. And the article says that at the same time, the backlash saw a MAGA power couple accused of hypocrisy for having a sexual encounter with another woman despite their vehement anti-LGBT campaigning. <laughs> God. Oh my gosh, this is just, I just can't believe this. Uh, so on Monday, March 18th, the couple filed a lawsuit against the Sarasota Police Department, SPD, and the state attorney's office in which they demanded that private communications obtained during the investigations not be released to the public and be destroyed in their totality. Destroy those records. During the course of the investigation, police obtained records from Christian Ziegler's phone, including text messages and emails, call logs, media content, web history. And uh, the court filing state the records being made public would cause great humiliation and harm to their individual reputations. Great humiliation and harm. I mean, it's what they did. They're so anti-LGBTQ, and they come out, and here they are. They're having a threesome. You know, this, this gay threesome, folks. I mean, it's just the hypocrisy is just absolutely astounding. And his argument is this. The cell phone and its contents are my personal property, he said on the court document. The phone includes years of data, including communications with my wife and different attorneys I've retained over the years. The phone and its contents were not intended to be public. To say that someone's entire life is contained on one cell phone is an understatement. Well, you know what? You did it. You deal with it, for God's sakes. And so remember Kyle Rittenhouse, folks? Remember Kyle Rittenhouse? He's an American young man who shot three men, two fatally, during the civil unrest in Kenosha, Wisconsin, in August 2020, when he was only 17. He was acquitted in his trial. He's back in the news, evidently, folks. He was booed off stage, and then this is kind of ridiculous. He's got a video where he actually came out, and he tried to make it look like he wasn't booed off stage. But I'm going to show you, and you can hear it, and you can decide for yourself. So here he is on stage. He, he, okay, I'll answer the question of racist things he said. He said we shouldn't celebrate Juneteenth. We shouldn't celebrate Martin Luther King Day. We should be working those days. It's called Katani Brown Jackson, an affirmative action hire. He's talked nonsense about George Floyd. And he said he'd be scared if a black pilot was on a plane. Does that not seem racist? I don't know anything about that. <laughs> no, no, no. Does that seem racist? Is a yes or no question, Kyle? Exactly. Oh, really? Deflection! Deflection! He can't comment on that. And there he goes off the stage immediately. Immediately. Oh, it's over now. It's over. So, folks, why couldn't he just say, you know, that that what the guy asked him? Why couldn't he just answer the question? He couldn't even answer the question in a common sense way. And here's how he kind of kind of faded the whole event. Here's what he said. Listen to this. I think it's funny uh, that a lot of the media is saying we got booed off stage. In reality, 
we uh, did a hard cutoff time and oh. just happened to leave at that. Great event. Oh, yeah. Just hard cutoff time. Yeah. You didn't get booed off stage. And look at the toothy smiles. What a joke. Till next time, folks.